Hey there everyone, this is Leo over at TechLine, and for the first time, we actually have ourselves a repair request. So over here, we have ourselves an iBuyPower PC. I know literally nothing about what's inside of it except for the description that my customer gave me, where they said that uh, starting earlier this week, it just started shutting down on them, just boop, straight off. So I want to pop this thing open, kind of check out to see what's going on inside of it, and figure out why that's happening. Now, just to make it a little bit easier to work inside of, I am just going to unscrew the glass side panel that's on this thing. I do see that they kind of kept the tempered glass handle with care uh, sticker that they left on there. That's a nice little aesthetic. Wow, that's a heavy piece of glass too. Whew, all right. Now that we got this thing popped open, we can kind of take a better look inside to see what we got going on over here. For the graphics card, it looks like we're running with an RTX 2070 in Aorus edition. So it's a nice, big, chunky, good, honestly, graphics card even right now to even be playing games on we just have this 120 millimeter aio cooler that's blowing air outside of it personally i'm not a huge fan of just the 120 aios i think if you're going to go with the whole all-in-one cooler you may want to go with 240 especially when it comes to anything spicy i find that tower coolers at the price range that these 120 aios kind of go for essentially can work far better than the 120s themselves can do but again we'll check the temperatures once this thing turns on i don't know what the process there is that we have under there but we'll find that out shortly we do have two sticks of ram in there running a dual channel of course as you should this is a pretty decent ram so we got an two eight gig sticks of ddr4 two 2666 memory in there so that's going to be just fine for a system like this i do like these newer cases i believe hyatt and lian lee Lee both run cases that have this exact kind of style in here where it blows air in coming in from this side and then the air swoops in in that direction and gets blown out of there so it kind of like gets air in a different manner so that way the side panel that's on there really also helps with sending the air in that direction as opposed to having fans over in the front bringing in the air in that way. Uh, the front panel in this case seems to be kind of just a big solid piece that's on there. And yeah, if we check over on this side, we do see that it does have a bit of perforation on this side of the case because that's where the air is coming in from. Not as much as I'd like. I see some newer cases that are going with this design that do like a whole mesh or just like fully perforated kind of side panel on this side to bring that air in. And I do like the uh, Star Wars stickers that we have going on over here. So it's enough of that. Let's just go ahead and plug this thing in, turn it on and see if I can replicate that issue of it just shutting down on the customer there. All right, we're skipping ahead over to our test bench. Let's give this thing already plugged in and give it the first boot. That is pretty light. I'm surprised there's no LEDs that are on the rings that are coming in over here, but maybe that's the aesthetic choice. But so far everything is turning on and we have ourselves a signal. Nice to I buy power symbol so we can get into the BIOS and kind of figure out what's going on first there. All right, so now that we're in the system, I'm not finding anything, at least for, well, no, that's a lie. Oh yeah, I think I already found the issue. We're just in the BIOS and we're running this thing on idle. And we are finding that we are running an Intel i9-9900K. That's basically like the best processor that you can get for this port. So that's fantastic. They can't even upgrade anything past this point, but processors already see 3.6 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM is already detected in there, but not even doing anything on idle just in the bios we're going at almost 45 degrees celsius that is it's kind of high I'll, I'll be honest that's a it's a bit spicy that's on there so yeah it's already climbing as we could see we're not even running anything we're just in the bios and generally if you're in the bios it's going to get like 30 and under from what i've seen with a lot of systems that i've built and this thing is still climbing in temperature so i'm pretty sure that's going to be our answer as to what's going on yeah for a processor like the 9900k i don't think a single 120 millimeter uh, aio is going to be enough for for what we're dealing with over here it's already at 47 bro we're idle oh my goodness yeah and that's climbing like really fast so i'm thinking that most likely what i'll have to do just get the aio off and just double check the thermal paste that's on it and kind of reapply it and that most likely will at least help with the temperatures a lot my other recommendation is if that's not doing it just kind of see about possibly getting a different cooler for this thing. Now, this system does have a three-year warranty, and they are out of that warranty period as of now, so that kind of explains why they're already working with me on this issue. And as you can see, we've already hit 50 degrees, and we haven't done anything yet. So, yeah, let's go boot this into Windows. We've already pretty much figured out what the problem is happening over here. The CPU is spicy, and we just need to get that part fixed. All right, so now we're booted into Windows, and I haven't ran anything yet. The only thing that I installed was CPU uh, ID hardware mod. Monitor. And yeah, let's check out the processor temperature real quick. It's hitting 115 degrees right now on idle. 
I'm not even gonna try to run any software right now. That is a huge red flag. We're just gonna shut it off right now, pull off the AIO, kind of check out the thermal paste that's on it and make sure that it's set on there properly. But yeah, that thing is melting itself right now. So we're not even gonna run any kind of software test to figure out what's going on. That's already our answer. So let's get that addressed real quick and just kind of kind of work from there at that point. I already went ahead and removed the back panel. So let's just go ahead and see about what's going off on the inside over here and get that AIO off. Now from when I was running this earlier, I was looking at the fans and I didn't see that there was anything that was like a red flag to me, at least when it came to the fans themselves. Um, so I didn't see that it wasn't running. So it might be an issue of the actual pump itself. And if that's the case, well then I'm about to let them know that, hey, you may have to get a different pump that's on there, but I'm not, again, I'm not seeing any red flags, at least when it comes to the fans spinning and trying to blow out the radiator or anything. So we'll see at least from the base level what we can get over there while we get all this removed. Oh, I love how they basically just screwed the whole AIO itself with these extra long screws that are going into the exhaust fan. So that basically the screws are going through the fan into the uh, all-in-one cooler to kind of keep it in there. So it's like double exhaust that's going on. I don't find that very necessary. You can honestly just mount the AIO into the exhaust and kind of call it a day, but it seems like they would just rather put both of them on there. It, again, there's nothing wrong with that. You're just having double the the exhaust at that point but all right we'll get the exhaust fan unplugged and then yeah we're gonna have to pop open to the other side to get this unplugged from the uh, from the other end but i'm not seeing any anything egregious on the uh, radiator itself it looks clean ish so yeah let's go pop this up off on the other side too what the last thing that we just need to do is just unscrew the four corners of this so that way we have access to the processor let's just see what we have under this thing and let's not burn my hand in the process. I left it enough time to cool, so that's not gonna happen. I, I, I think we found our problem. There's, uh, there's nothing there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and solve that with just a thermal paste application, and I think we're about to fix the problem real quick. Now, despite my initial shock of the, uh, as you can see, lack of thermal paste that's on there, that's not exactly something that's too uncommon over time if you're using a cheap thermal paste that it essentially just incinerates and melts away. But yeah, that thing is completely gone. Let's go ahead and wipe this up, wipe it off from the uh, bottom of the uh, copper that we can see here on the AIO as well. So we'll just need to get it off of that while we're at it. And then just some, apply some new paste and put it back on there. But honestly, I think it's going to be the whole solution. And we'll just get ourselves a nice, fresh, new application of paste, more than enough for this processor that's on there. All right, from there, I'm actually gonna get the block onto the processor first. Usually I would actually do the block last, like after mounting the radiator, but considering the way the radiator is going to be mounted, it has to be mounted on top of the fan that's on the exhaust in the back. It's not gonna give me a lot of room for this to get under it. So I'm just gonna have this mounted first and then the radiator. Of course, just do each corner just a little bit and then you screw the rest of it down afterwards onto the back plate. All right, block is fully on there. Let's just get the radiator mounted over towards the back. Okay, these screws go all the way through the first fan and screw into the radiator. So it's only holding the radiator up with just two screws. I tell you, if it's all just a thermal paste application, this might be one of my easiest repairs. And then from there, we can start getting some devices plugged in. So let's just go ahead and plug the radiator in. First, we'll just go ahead and daisy chain the LEDs that are on there to make sure that's all in there and working. And we'll just continue with the same Molex connectors they've been using beforehand. Save everything the way I found it. All right, let's go uh, fire this thing back up and see if pretty much a thermal paste application fixed the whole thing. And go right into the BIOS first and kind of just figure out, you know, just to see if it's still running supremely spicy in there. Okay, so not terrible. I'm just going to go boot in the windows from this point on and kind of see what's going on. Oh, it's rising again. That might be an issue. It could be the pump block at that point that's causing a problem. Because, yeah, this is already rising again. We're already at 40 degrees. So, yeah, let's go boot ourselves in the windows and just check out hardware monitor and see what's going on. Because, yeah, it's a fresh thermal paste application. I do see that the exhaust fans, both of them are kind of running just fine. It could be a pump block issue at that point. 
All right, yeah, and even with the fresh application of thermal paste on the processor, we still see that it's still running and peaking at 115 degrees Celsius. So that's a, it's a big problem, which means that it's either a problem with the processor itself or actually it does appear to be dropping at this point. Maybe it's just like residual heat from when it was on beforehand. So you know what to do? I'm gonna let it run for like 20 minutes, right? And just kind of see where it tapers off at this point to see maybe if it's something weird that's going on, on that side or if it's just like a residual heat from when it was on beforehand. Cause yeah, cause it says that the max is 115, but clearly it's not doing that anymore. Now it's going down to 68, 60. Yeah, it's just going down now. So I'm just gonna let it run. I'm gonna give it about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna see where it's gonna be finally idling at. And then I'm gonna see if I can just run, I mean, the user said they tried to run Overwatch 2. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can just get Port Royal on this computer from um, FutureMark uh, through their Steam account and then kind of just kind of work from there. Go in to just see if I can run Time Spy at this point and just kind of see what happens from there. Oh, <laughs> that answers our question. Okay, I didn't even get as far as trying to run the software. It just shut down on us uh, in real time. Yeah, so there's either a problem with the pump block that's on the AIO or the processor itself seems to be the issue. So uh, I guess I'm gonna have to, well, I'm gonna have to see what's going on at that point and uh, let the client know what's going on because it seems to be uh, what's happening. Definitely, it's not a simple therm thermal paste problem, so. Awesome to figure that out at least. You know, and I just remember that the easiest way of checking to see if the pump block itself is working is just to check out the BIOS and just see if you can see the fan for the CPU header is uh, spinning there, or essentially the RPMs for it, because since it's, yep, CPU fan, yeah, it's it's on there, it's working. So we already know that the pump block is actually going because we have ourselves the uh, RPMs that are on the fan status, because the pump itself is plugged into the CPU fan header, not the fan that's on the actual block itself. So, and yeah, we can see the temperatures are and they're climbing to this ridiculously high numbers. I feel like I should have the answer to this. Like I should know what's going on over there. I've checked the pump. The pumps, RPMs are coming through the BIOS just fine. I've checked the thermal application. That looks like it's coming in just fine. The fans are all spinning. But as I'm touching the radiator itself here, I'm not feeling any heat going into the radiator. So alternate idea, I think I'm going to try flipping the AIO over to where I believe it should be, where you have like the pump block under the thing. Cause I think, I think that might be the issue. I mentioned it earlier in the video where I believe that the pump should be rotated to like installed in a certain direction because that's what sounds more correct from every other one that I've installed. But I decided to install it the way that I buy power installed it and just left it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it, flip it over 180 degrees, turn it back on and see what happens because I don't think there's a problem with the processor and I'm not sure if it's a contact issue and I think it's a pump issue that's going on at this point. All right, and the only thing that I want to do is just flip this over and hopefully I don't have to rearrange any cables to do so. I don't believe I do. This is how I think the pump should be. By just simply flipping over the AIO 180 degrees, I'll just turn it on and test it while the tubes are going, as you can see, in this direction as opposed to under it. And if that works, then I'll take off this fan and flip this over so you can aesthetically have these cables not in the way over there. So I'm gonna turn it on again and see what happens at this point with the uh, tubes going in this direction instead. Yeah, it's still running at 115 there, even if you flipped it over. So I honestly think it's a pump problem at this point in time. I don't think the CPU is causing that to occur. I, I think there's a problem with the actual uh, with the actual cooler. That's where it's gonna be. I happen to have a tower cooler from Arctic, uh, an Arctic Freezer 33. It's one of their older tower coolers that they have over here. I'm just gonna replace the AIO just with this, just to see if it works. Because if it does, then we at least know that it's a problem with the AIO and not the processor. And then I can just tell my client like, hey, we got to order your replacement AIO and work from there. So let me get this on there just to see what happens. Also, I personally got to say, this is, is a reason why I personally prefer air coolers over AIOs is because you can tell whether or not it's working immediately. It, there's a fan or two on it and, and that's it. There's no special crazy pumps or anything like that to worry about. It's either on or it's not. Fan is snapped in and mounted. Let's just get this turned on and see what we get. Let's go ahead and just see what the bio says. Well, I guess we're a bit booted in the window. But you know what, let's just go right to windows. Let's see what the window says. That is indeed exactly what it is. Look at these temperatures right now. They are plummeting. We're going down to 44, like I think it's just like, re like 
re, uh, redoing its uh, temperatures. These were settling at like 100 constantly. This is just the NZXT cam software that they included. If we check over at hardware monitor, we have over at the temperatures, yeah. 37 degrees Celsius and idle. Yeah, that's completely fine. We are, we have finally solved the issue. And yeah, just to be 100% certain, I'm running Time Spy demo just to, to basically make sure that it's working. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had any shutdowns since we swapped out that cooler that's over there, but that's my test cooler and I'm not going to give it to the client. So this guy had to get torn out of there. And what we'll be doing instead is I let them know what's going on. I gave him a charge for replacement parts and repairs and he said completely agreeable. So I'm going to actually go run over to a Best Buy that's nearby where fortunately I can get things like coolers just fine over at a Best Buy. So I'll go pick one up over there, bring it back over here, swap it out with another one that's over here. Unfortunately, iBuyPower does not sell the specific 120 millimeter cooler anywhere that I could find. I've checked uh, the internet, I've checked Amazon, Newegg, etc. They, they don't sell these things individually. These are specifically branded towards them, hence why it even has like an iBuyPower logo that's on them. I've seen online that some folks have recommended that the NZXT 120 millimeter cooler is like the closest one to this one, but again, it wouldn't look identical. So instead, I'm just gonna, I let them know like, listen, I could replace this with something today with stuff that I could find nearby, but it won't look identical. And they said, that's completely fine. I just wanna get gaming again. I'm like, I got you. So I'm gonna go ahead over to Best Buy right now, pick up a replacement cooler, come back and replace it over here. And we'll talk about that replacement cooler once we're back. And an hour later and I'm back with an AIO. That's right. I've decided to pick this one up right over from Best Buy. It is the H60 Elite from Corsair. It is obviously not a direct replacement to the AIO that we had from iBuyPower. They have their own customized one, but figured we could just still get one that's affordable and will fit the bill. Don't need any safety or warranty information. The fan. I'm most likely going to remove the fan from the other one that came with the iBuyPower one instead of using the one that's here, just so that it can still match the case aesthetically. And then just give this to the customer just so that way they can keep it or mount it somewhere else if they want. But it's not a bad idea to keep this around. It has a nice feeling fan though. So let's get the actual AIO out. Here we are. All right, so we're gonna have ourselves a new pump block that's on it as well. And I'll, I'll remove this once we're actually ready to mount it. It looks like it already came pre-applied with some thermal paste. So I shouldn't have to reapply any. I know some folks are like, oh no, you should reapply your own. It's fine. It's not going to kill you. And of course, all the mounting brackets that we have here. We already have one built onto the back of the motherboards. We shouldn't need these, but uh, we'll see once we're there. So let's just go ahead and get that fan mounted. I'm most likely going to have it so that it's going to be oriented in this direction instead. Whereas where the I buy power one that came with came with it under. I don't want to do that. Let's just keep it in this direction. So it's going to, once it's mounted onto the board, kind of look like this. Man, remember earlier when I said how easy this was going to be as it was just a thermal paste change? Wow, what a lie that I give on that time. All right, the fan's mounted. Let's see about getting all this installed inside the case. Now these shouldn't be anything too wild. I can essentially get them in there by hand at first and then afterwards get the rest of it screwed on there. And let's just carefully get that on there. All right, just screw the lug nuts in by hand and then we'll just tighten it all course down with the screwdriver afterwards, a little bit by little bit on each side. This is it folks, we're looking at the finish line to this repair job here. We still got those two screws that are sticking out of it, so we'll just mount it right to those two screws. Now even though I had my gripes, like I mentioned beforehand about tower cooler versus AIO, I do have to admit that it is significantly easier to install an AIO than it is to install one of those multi-fan tower coolers and having to like deal with like how large they are and all the crazy brackets that are on them and you know getting the fans wired on like this this was was much easier in comparison to installing my Noctua cooler but by and large like it's just night and day difference. Now let's get that fan plugged in and test out those thermals. Peel this off before I fire this thing up so let's go ahead and that feels nice, all right. And let's give it the first boot. So far, so good. And we'll check out the temps right away. So let's just go ahead and jump right into those bios first and kind of just see what we get on that side. That is definitely better. Look at this. Finally, at idle, we're running at 29 degrees. I actually 
because originally in these bios they actually had their cpu fan setting set to like what is this like full blast yeah full blast which they probably had to do due to all like the heat problems that they were happening so now the computer is much more quieter i could probably leave it at silent honestly because man this thing was just like all fans all go earlier now this is much more manageable. Hell, even the, uh, as you can see over here, the fan speed is like half that of what the other one was. But yeah, running at 29 now as opposed to like 50 and climbing. So let's go ahead and save these BIOS, jump into Windows, just check out CPU ID again real quick now that we've already replaced everything that's on there. And uh, most likely we're done. And now that we're back in Windows, if you check out the temperatures again, we're actually seeing that we're not only getting 30 degrees, we're actually getting under 30 degrees while we're running the computer. So this is absolutely fantastic. I'm glad that it was just as simple as swapping out the AIO with another one. These temperatures are absolutely great from here. So I'm just going to call the client afterwards and just let them know what happened. And we're ready to pick it up from there. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm actually pretty glad uh, the way it turned out. You know, we only just found out that it was just a, unfortunately, a busted AIO pump. So uh, I already let my customer know what's going to go on over there. I already swapped it out, got payment for it, and uh, he's going to come and pick it up today. So yeah, it was pretty uh, fun to actually dive into a PC, especially a pre-built, and find out what was going on with it. Until next time, this is Leo over at TechLionPCs.com. Go check out our website, check out our consultations, check out our pre-built PCs over on our shop. And if you're looking to get a PC built and commissioned, go check out that section of our site as well.